Well, hello, beautiful people. We are going to talk about the quadrilateral family tree today. And if you watched the video before this, I did mention the kind of family tree. We kind of see how all of these are related. All quadrilaterals are related, right? Because quad, four, lateral being the sides, they're all four-sided figures, right? So all quadrilaterals have four sides, but we can sort them in different ways. So if we're looking at kind of a family tree type scenario, we have that parallelograms or those in the parallelogram family have two sets of parallel sides. In the trapezoid kind of family, we have one set of parallel sides. And kites, kind of like the crazy uncle, right, in the family, but a little different, have no sets of parallel sides. So let's start at the kite, talk about its properties, and we'll work our way over to the parallelogram family. So a kite is a four-sided figure, so it is a quadrilateral, and excuse the drawing, right? Okay, so opposite sides, so here's the properties of quadrilateral, so of a kite, sorry. So opposite sides are congruent. So I show that with the congruency dashes. The tops that are adjacent to each other are congruent. The bottoms are congruent, and it has one pair of congruent angles. So those kind of that pair right there in the middle, those opposite angles are congruent. So two pairs of congruent sides, the adjacent sides are congruent, and one set of opposite congruent angles. And I can show those all, all with the congruency dashes and then the angle arcs, right? So that's a kite. A trapezoid has one set of parallel sides. I can show that the bases are parallel. The bases are the ones that connect the kind of diagonal legs. So the legs are the diagonals, the bases connect the legs, right? So there's the bases. The bases are parallel to each other. And I can show that with the, that kind of like arrow marker. So that shows that the bases, the top and bottom base are parallel to each other, right? So they have one set of parallel sides. The bases are parallel. Now let's look at the parallelogram family. So a parallelogram is kind of like you took a rectangle and you pushed it over. So let's look at a parallelogram. All right, not the best drawing, but stay with me now. All right, so there's a parallelogram. So here's what we know about a parallelogram. A parallelogram has two sets of parallel sides. So this side is parallel to this side, and this side is parallel to this side. And again, parallel meaning if those lines continued, they would never intersect, right? Parallel sides. They also have two sets of congruent sides. So this side is congruent to this side. This side is congruent to this side. They also have opposite angles that are congruent. So this angle is congruent to this angle, and this angle is congruent to this angle, right? So opposite sides, uh, opposite angles are congruent. So two sets of parallel sides, two sets of congruent sides, and opposite, si opposite angles that are congruent. In the parallelogram family, we also have a rectangle and a rhombus. They have all the same properties of a parallelogram. Two sets of parallel sides, opposite sides are congruent, opposite angles are congruent. But a rectangle is special because it is a parallelogram that is made up of, oops, four right angles. And again, my drawings aren't perfect people, but I'm sorry about that. All right, so a rectangle is a special parallelogram that has four right angles. Everything else about the parallelogram is true about the rectangle, except now it also has four right angles. So opposite angles, oh, sorry, opposite sides are parallel. Opposite sides are congruent. And obviously, since they're all 90 degrees, opposite angles are congruent. A rhombus, also in the parallelogram family, has everything true about a parallelogram is also true about a rhombus, except a rhombus is like you took a square, and I'm gonna make this to the best of my ability kind of, right? You took a square and you pushed it over. So the special thing about a rhombus is that it has four congruent sides. So not just opposite sides being congruent, but all sides are congruent. So that's in the parallelogram family. 
But again, everything that's true about a parallelogram is true about a rhombus, right? Opposite angles are congruent. Opposite sides are, well, all sides are congruent. And opposite sides are parallel. So it's in that parallelogram family, right? It shares those traits. And then the baby of the family, the little baby of the family, is the square. Everything that's true about a parallelogram, and that's true about a rectangle, and that's true about a rhombus, is true about the square. So a square is a special parallelogram with four congruent sides, like the rhombus, and four right angles, like the rectangle. So it's kind of the baby of the family. It has everybody's kind of super special traits. So when we look at our parallelogram or our quadrilateral family, we can sort them based on their kind of parallel sides. Again, parallelograms, two sets of parallel sides. Trapezoids, one set of parallel sides. Kite, no sets of parallel sides. But in the parallelogram family, we have the rectangle, the rhombus, and the square. And remember, everything that's true of the top flows downward but not the opposite, right? So a rectangle has all the traits of a parallelogram with those four right angles. A rhombus has all the traits of a parallelogram with those four congruent sides. A square has all of the traits. It's a super special quadrilateral that it is a parallelogram, it is a rectangle, it is a rhombus, it is the baby, and it is special. All right, let me know if you have any questions on the quadrilateral family tree and understanding the properties of the six quadrilaterals we need to know. Love ya. Bye.